Last week in the monthly Ashes of Creation livestream, Intrepid gave us an in-depth look at some of the UI elements in the game, along with teasing some new features as well. Diving right into it with the best things shown, we have the blacksmithing UI. Obviously, this is a work in progress and will more than likely change a lot throughout the alpha and into the betas and launch, but at quick glance, you will notice that it is very clean and has the basic things you'd want from crafting. But as you dig deeper, you'll notice a bit more. Over here in the bottom, you will notice a few things. First, being that there is a cost to craft items. Whether this money goes to the node you're crafting in or just a gold sink or a combination of both is unknown. I would assume some of it will go to the node. This doesn't seem to include any node taxes yet, but again, work in progress. So clearly using somebody's anvil is gonna cost you some money. The next thing you notice is these two buttons at the bottom fast craft and manual craft. Now, we know that Intrepid plans to tie in some mini games into crafting to make it feel like you're actually making the item. That, I would assume, is what the manual crafting is. Giving you the freedom to fine tune those items, add customization and augments, and really feel like you're building that sword in your hands. Whereas for fast craft, I imagine would be a way for players to skip that part of it if you're just trying to make a bulk of random items quickly and don't really care about what these stats are on them. You're just trying to level up the crafting. I'd also expect fast craft to potentially have lower stats and less customization within those weapons or armor you're crafting, but just speculation. You then notice that there is a duration spot too, telling you how long it will take until your item is ready. I would guess this is the time for manual craft and not fast craft, but this is just pure speculation at this point. This could potentially even be showing that this guy made 10 items and this is the actual time it'll take for you to craft those 10 items doing fast craft. It doesn't really give specific details on and we probably won't know until they give us a crafting showcase or alpha 2. Moving on, you may notice that each item requires a specific workstation level to craft at. In this case, you need an apprentice weaponsmith station. This will tie into nodes and governments requiring you to find a node that has your that has your needs as a crafter or a governor that's going to support your needs, potentially even causing you to uproot your home and move to a different node that will fit your crafting lifestyle. Over on the left, you'll notice many drop-down menus for craftable weapons, and some items appear to have their own drop-down sections, as well as allowing you to make different types of the same weapon, more fitting to a specific player type or class build, but giving you the same initial look as that spear. But I would assume that everything in this drop-down menu will probably look very similar style-wise. In the weapon creation screen, you'll see some of the materials you need, such as iron ingots, oak lumber, and gold ingots. You then can see the blacksmith is currently a weaponsmith, and is level 75 out of 100. I would assume it says weaponsmith because this specific crafting window, this guy specialized on a weaponsmithing tree instead of an armor smithing tree under the blacksmithing artisan skill. And currently the level is 75 out of 100. But we don't know if that 100 is a hard cap or you go to the next tier of crafting once you hit 100. Because if you look up here, you will see tier four next to blacksmith, where I'd assume this represents your rank within the artisan class. Perhaps meaning you can make up to tier four armor and weapons and, once, and maybe once you surpass that 100 level milestone, it bumps you up to tier five or something along those lines. Or the level 100 could be a hard cap, we don't know. Overall, the blacksmithing UI looks very easy to follow and clean without giving you a bunch of unnecessary crap, which is great. Also allowing you to search or filter items. This will be huge, especially once you start racking up those recipes and those schematics and are able to make tons and tons of different armor and weapons. But also one thing to keep in mind is that this screen is definitely not what you're gonna see on launch. They said in the live stream this last week that this is a more simplistic take on the UI and it'll be a bit more complex when it's completed. This is just more for Alpha 2 to give you a taste of how crafting will actually work with that complexity, I assume, being added down the road. But it has definitely already come a very long way from Alpha 1, as you can see. For other UI parts in the stream, we have some generic item icons for various windows, along with icons for the eight class archetypes in different states, all with pretty unique and interesting appearances. We also have some minimap icons representing various points of interest that will be showing up on the minimap. I really enjoy the style that Intrepid is going with, with everything that they've done, especially with the minimap. I've said this before, I love the minimap, and I like the little icons that they're putting on the minimap too. We also see some class icons, which look to be a mixture of the cleric, fighter, ranger, tank, and mage icons, and perhaps a rogue or a necromancer as well. And on the left, we have various debuff symbols, and on the right, we have icons that represent weapons and a mount. If you head over to the character page, you'll see it's extremely smooth and simple, and having your inventory attached to this character screen is a big win for me. I absolutely love this. It looks a lot more organized,
organized and you don't have to have multiple windows opened up so you don't have to open your bags and the character screen and drag stuff over it's all right there on one window you have your generic item slot a ranged and an offhand slot various ranged necklaces and trinkets and whatever these three items may be down here as well perhaps costumes and some other things i don't really know otherwise there isn't too much interesting that remains that they showed just a bunch of icons drop down menus and quest logs we do have quests that talk about a missing boy sending you to investigate where he ran off to and what scared him probably a placeholder quest and not really any big spoilers within that one thing i noticed though is that each quest appears to be tied into a story arc that has multiple chapters tied into it you don't see quest accepted you see story arc accepted and then the chapter number and its name below that steven did tease in the stream that their questing will be a bit different than what we are used to in mmorpgs so perhaps this is what he is referring to giving us story arcs to complete that tie together instead of miscellaneous quests that really don't have any meaning to them what is cool about all of this ui stuff shown is it is going to be completely customizable so you'll be able to move these around resize them potentially change the colors and save multiple presets that could change automatically for you based on what you're doing in the game for example if you join a raid you might have a different setup for it than you would for going out and crafting and exploring and when you join that raid party your ui could automatically shift over to that raid ui and then when you leave that party go back to your miscellaneous adventure and ui setup that you had there is a lot more stuff shown than what i talked about but like i said most of it is buttons and components to the ui that doesn't really show you anything new compared to what we've already seen so if you want to go check those out the full live stream link is in the description below otherwise if you're new to ashes and you've yet to create an account feel free to use my referral link in the description below where you can jump in on the forums buy some cosmetics or just hang out until you can finally step foot into the world of vera otherwise be sure to click that subscribe button hit that thumbs up turn on the bell for notifications and stay tuned for a lot more to come